Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. Um, Melissa says, happy Friday Eve. That's what. That's the way to think positive. Yes, absolutely. All right, good morning, Richard and Melissa, Stacy, Teresa, Leslie, Susan, Connie and Rick, Miss Gustina, Sherry. Um, oh, Sherry's joining us from South Carolina. All right. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys are getting to travel. We've missed you. I've missed seeing you. Uh, good morning, Bobby and Jan and Larry, Charlotte, Art, Barb, Peggy, Janet, Vivian. What a great group we have on this morning. All right. So the gang's all here. And so let's get started. Except we're missing Joe and Charlene. I, I don't see them on here this morning. Um, all right, so uh, our our day today starts with the word work, and um, we are starting with Colossians 3.23, which says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. God created humans in his image and blessed them to be fruitful through work. All work is sacred when it is divinely inspired and empowered by the Holy Spirit. How do you perceive the work that you do? In a culture that prizes fame and fortune, we can chase work that draws us away from the Lord. We want the Lord to bless we want the Lord to bless the work of our hands, but we have but have we sought his wisdom and direction regarding our efforts? Works of the flesh that are birthed by pride contrary pride and contradict God's righteousness, don't experience a great reward. When we humble ourselves and ask him to lead, we taste his blessing on what we do because it is led by him. No matter what the work of our hands look like, whether it we whether we feel it is significant or menial, God asks that we do it unto him. We honor the Lord by diligently following his lead every day seeking his guidance and grace. His blessings on all that we do continues as we remain sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You will find joy and satisfaction when you devote all your work, personal and professional, to the Lord. Wholehearted work is worship when we do it unto him. How often do I find myself mindful of God's attention to and appreciation of my work? Now, that's a really powerful question, I think, because 
we may go on about our work and we may think, well, this is just mundane stuff. You know, in the house, we have to, you know, take care of our house. We have to do our dishes. We have to cook dinner. We have to mow the lawn. You know, we have to fix things occasionally. We've got all of this stuff to do and we may grumble and groan about it, but there's joy in doing it because, I mean, thank goodness we have a, a house or some place to live where we get to do those things. Thank goodness we have money to go and buy groceries and and uh, groceries to be able to fix a dinner. Thank goodness that we have dishes to eat on and that we, you know, when we have dirty dishes, that means somebody's been fed, us or the, our loved ones and or our loved ones. Um. When we do all of these things, perhaps we can think upon these things. Isn't that what Brother Lawrence did in practicing the presence of, of God? He thought upon these things. This is how he taught us to pray without ceasing, was to be mindful of all of the things that we do during the day and how it brings glory to God, or it can. Or it can be something that we complain about, but hopefully we're looking at it as blessings. Um, when it comes to our work in the workplace, we may think, well, this is just what I have to do in order to get a paycheck. Mm, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be, how can I serve other people? How can I serve my coworker? How can I be there to encourage that person in the work that they do to see things in them that may, um, may encourage them that they may not even see in themselves so it's a way of being able to point out wonderful things that they're doing and and what a difference they're making and you know we get to shine the light of christ when we do those sorts of things um there you know when we it's so easy sometimes to just complain about the things we do to think oh if only i didn't have to work you know if only i didn't have to go you know get out there on the highway and go do this um you know it just it's it's just i don't know it's it's a it really a joy to be able to work and um and so I think that if we just kind of look at it like that, it change our whole it changes our whole perspective. And we see the blessings in it. And we see that this is actually something that we get to do for the glory of God. And that in doing it, that um we actually can please God. And I love what it says here that wholehearted work is worship when we do it unto him. It it is um it is precious to him. And, um, and he cares about how we do it. So I think that this is really a good reminder as we go into work, whatever that work looks like, whether we're going into a workplace or whether we've got a sink full of, of dishes in there that need to be washed and we get to go in there and we get to, we get to do this because we have families to serve and because God has given us so much and so we can do it with joy. So here's our prayer today. It says, Lord Jesus, we submit every dream, goal, and endeavor to your cleansing fire. Purify every desire and lead us by your spirit so that we may never lead by impure motives. You see everything that we do, even the secret assignments that receive no recognition from man. May our work be done wholeheartedly unto you to bring you glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So here's our declaration. God is my boss. That should be easy, right? God is my boss and I work wholeheartedly for him. Everything we do, we do it for him. And here's our action. Today, notice any time that you find yourself looking for recognition from others, then turn your attention to the Lord and hear his affirmation of your work. Amen and amen. Ah, oh, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. And we just ask now, Lord, that as we go to your word, that you will touch our hearts, that you will help us to, to see even this little devotion at work in the scriptures. And may it may it be trans. Trans, may it transform us, transform our hearts and our minds so that we remember that you are boss and that everything we do, we do for your glory and not our own. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, so Exodus 37, starting in verse 17, we're on page 192 in the Chronological Bible, if you're following along. And yesterday we left off with Bezalel, and we um, are going to start with him today. And Bezalel was a very talented man. He could he could work with cloth and sewing the uh, various colors of, of thread into this beautiful tapestry, into these beautiful curtains that would make up the walls of the tent. Um, we, we saw him doing woodwork and metalwork. And I mean, what, what a talented person that he could kind of do it all. So it says, then, then Bezalel made a lampstand of pure hammered gold. He made the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. The lampstand had six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches had three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lampstand was crafted with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There were almond bud there was an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extended from the center stem all made of one piece the almond buds and branches were all of one piece with the center stem and they were hammered from pure gold he also made seven lamps from the lampstand lamp snuffers and trays of all pure gold the entire lampstand along with its accessories was made from 75 pounds of pure gold then Bezalel made the incense altar of acacia wood. It was 18 inches square, 36 inches high, with horns at the corners carved from the same piece of wood as the altar itself. He overlaid the top, sides, and horns of the altar with pure gold, and he ran a gold molding around the entire altar. He made two gold rings and attached them on opposite sides of the altar below the gold molding to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And then he made the sacred anointing oil and the fragrant incense using the techniques of a skilled incense maker. Next, Bezalel used acacia wood to construct the square altar of burnt offering. It was seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. He made horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and altar were all one piece. He overlaid the altar with bronze, and then he made all the altar utensils of bronze, the ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pans. Next, he made a bronze grating and installed it halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. He cast four rings and attached them to the corners of the bronze grating to hold the carrying poles, and he made the poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar. The altar was hollow and was made from planks. Bezalel made the bronze wash basin and its bronze stand from bronze mirrors donated by the women who served at the entrance of the tabernacle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then Bezalel made the courtyard, which was enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side, the curtains were 150 feet long. They were held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. He made a silver set of curtains for the north side. 150 feet of curtains held up by the 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. He hung the curtains with the silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard were 75 feet long, hung with silver hooks and rings and supported by 10 posts set into seven bases. The east end, the front, was also 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance was on the right, on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side was 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side was also 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into bases. All the curtains used in the courtyard were made of finely woven linen. Each post had a bronze base and all the hooks and rings were silver. The tops of the posts of the courtyard were overlaid with silver and the rings to hold up the curtains were made of silver. He made the curtain for 
the entrance to the courtyard of finely woven linen, and he decorated it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It was 30 feet long, and its height was seven and a half feet, just like the curtains on the courtyard walls. It was supported by four posts, each set securely in its own bronze base. The tops of the posts were overlaid with, with silver, and the hooks and rings were also made of silver. All the tent pegs used in the tabernacle courtyard were made of bronze. Okay, so I never know how my, how my mind's going to go when I read these scriptures, and it seems to be every time I read this, that something new comes to mind. So there's some new question that I have, or there's some new thought that I have. And as I was reading all of this, I was trying to figure out in my mind, um, how, you know, what kind of manpower it would take to carry all of this, because all of these pieces fit together. And you see that some of them even says, you know, they're, that they are, they're made and they're overlaid with these metals like silver. Some of them are so long, like 150 feet long are these curtains. And then they've got to have these big poles that, um, you know, are, are long to be able to hold these up. And, um, and I'm just thinking as all of this is being read, I'm thinking about how heavy all of that must have been and what a an effort it must have been for the community to come together to carry all of this. And, you know, it's not so different really than what we're called to do in the church. You know, we're blessed that we have a permanent building to go to, um, to worship the Lord. But inside that building, there are all sorts of things that have to happen in order for us to worship together. You know, there are people that have to um, work on our music, you know, preparing songs and, um, and have to be there on Sunday morning to lead them. There are people that, um, have to prepare, like we ministers that are on here, we have to prepare a sermon and that takes hours to do that. Um, and in some cases, in some cases, maybe not, but in most cases, it takes hours and hours to do it, to plan it, to to study, to write it, to execute it. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just, there's a lot there. There are people that work behind the scenes. I think about our elders and our deacons and the, the things that they have to do, preparing communion, um, you know, putting the little papers out in the, in the, um, chairs or the, you know, the books that we write on. If, you, if you're in your church, you write uh, like an attendance pad. There are uh, like our church secretaries, like um, Tawny and um, Christy, there and more. And, you know, that that um, have to, to uh, put together the bulletin and how, you know, PowerPoint slides and all of those things like Barb puts that together for us every week. There's so many things. And so it's kind of like when I'm thinking about this and all of the, the little pieces that are made, we've got, we've got Bezalel making a lot of this, but they're going to have to be people to help carry this and help put it together and all of those things. And so it just is a reminder to me of, of how every single one of us are needed. There's not any one of us that are not needed in God's kingdom. And we all have different tasks. And sometimes our work, like we read in our devotional this morning, may seem menial, but it's not. It's all very important. Even carrying the bread and the juice to the table and putting it on the table so that it's ready for worship is an important job. Because if you've ever had that not happen, you know how important it is because you kind of panic when you don't see it there. And you're like, and I've had that happen before where I've, I've, I've gotten started in a service not and seen that the, the uh, communion stuff is not there. And while the choir singing or something like that had to go and, and, and get, get it ready and bring it to the table um, because it, it, that was a job that was missed on Sunday morning. Connie reminds us of, you know, creating 400 packets for CCA, uh, for VBS came through the spirit. That, that was an effort of love. And that was a way of carrying the message outside the church. It just takes every one of us. 
Melissa, Holy Spirit is working through the scripture. That's exactly right. That's why all of these different things come to mind for me and for you and for everyone else. Um, and Leslie points out even the menorah was 75 pounds. I know that's a lot, isn't it? And to think about all of these poles that are that are there and these pieces that have to be carried and they have to be um, handled with care, especially these pieces that have been carved out into these beautiful things. I mean, this, this was not just, okay, let's do something to so that, you know, it functions. This was how can we make it beautiful? And I think even that spirit we can bring into the church. It's, it's, it's there in the church that, you know, what, how can we make our worship beautiful? How can we improve what people see? We spent some time this week, earlier this week, the potpourri group did, which is our ladies group, spent some time decorating the sanctuary. And that may have seemed like, oh, this is so boring. Why do we even have to do that? And there are some people who would say that is absolutely unnecessary. I, I was in a, a church once where it was, you know, it was like, why in the world do you do all this decorating? Well, because I want it to feel like home. I want it to feel like a comfortable space. I want it to be warm and inviting. And even I had a friend this week, I was getting some things for the church and um, I had to make a phone call to her. And when I was asking her, you know, when I was talking to her, she said, I told her what I was doing. And she said, you know, how many pastors are, are at Hobby Lobby <laughs> buying decor for the church? And I said, well, you know what? I want it to be pretty and I want it to just be homey. And it's just a small thing. But when people come in on Sunday morning, now that we're into fall, I just want people to feel the warmth of the season. And so that's what we do. Every little thing is important. Every little thing makes a difference, even though some people may disagree. But I think it's all important. It's all a labor of love from carrying the the bread and cup to the communion table to putting together the powerpoints to Jenna's on good morning Jenna to working with the kids and the youth um to to doing all of these things it's all important and we get to do it for the glory of the lord so i guess our our lesson for today must be about our work there must be some of us um, that as we go into work today, whether that be working in our home or working outside of the home, when we do it today, we do it in remembering that we do it for the love of the Lord and we do it for his glory. All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And um, our prayer today, um, we continue to pray for Sandy. She's doing really well. We're glad for a successful surgery. We continue to pray for Dortha, who is in rehab for after her hip surgery. Um, and she'll be there until uh, for another week. Um, we continue to pray for Barbara with her back spasms. And we just pray that those muscles continue to relax. We pray for Suzanne. We had a wonderful opportunity last night to pray for Suzanne and um, she has cancer and we were able to anoint her with oil and lay hands on her. And so we are praying for her. We're praying today for Vivian who is in the process of selling her house in Eufaula, Oklahoma. And um, that'll be the last piece before she's really just settled here in Texas. And so um, we pray that all goes well. We pray that um, there are, that, you know, all the paperwork goes through and everything's good and that it happens quickly. Um, and then we continue to pray for Randy Kirby, uh, family and friends after Randy passed away this week. And this is a friend of Melissa's. And uh, we pray also for Mary Beth in our church. And if there's anybody else uh, from Moore or from Burnett that we need to pray for, please, by all means, put their names in the chat box and um, I will add them to the prayer list. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the work that you've called us to do. And every one of us has a different task to do. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us to do it to the very best of our ability to do it out of an act of love for you and an appreciation for the amazing God that you are. Let every task that we do be a reminder of your blessings. 
When we do our dishes, let it be a reminder of the delicious food that we eat. And let us be grateful for the hands that prepared it and, and picked it and planted it. And we, above all, give thanks to you for providing and for making it all grow. We thank you, Lord, for the work that we get to do um, in our volunteer areas, from community uh, to the church. Lord, we just do it, even though it's is is a uh, it takes a piece of our time. We do it with love because we care about the people that we do it for. We care about the people in the church. We care about the people in our community. We care about those that are less fortunate. And so, Father, help us to do this to your glory. Father, I pray that you will just remind us what a blessing it is to serve you and what a blessing it is for you to provide for us because you love us. And sometimes, Lord, we just take you for granted. But, Lord, we just we pray that you will just help us to get our priorities straight and, and to help us have the mind of Christ. and. When we do this, Lord, we thank you for the joy that we'll experience and the blessing that we'll experience because it won't be something that we do because we have to. It's something that we get to do because we want to, because we know that it brings you joy and it makes you smile. Father, I pray that you will forgive us of our sins, forgive us when we do grumble, when we are critical, when we uh, criticize the things that you have given us just by being ungrateful. Father, I pray that you will help us instead to, um, to, to, to find the many ways, the many things that we have to be grateful for. And Father, I pray that you'll be with our nation. Right now, we are a nation divided, mostly along these political lines, but in so many other ways as well. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us regardless of what our view is of how things need to happen. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to remember that you are in charge. And no matter what happens, no matter whether our candidate gets into um, office or not, whether we see the world as crumbling, it is not, Lord, you're, you are still in charge. And we thank you, Lord, that we have one day, the day to look forward to that when, when Jesus returns and when all this that's complicated and all this that's in turmoil will be brought into alignment with, with you and will, and will be peaceful once again. But until that day comes, Lord, help us to maneuver through our day, through our weeks, through the months, through the years keeping our eyes focused on you and knowing that every day that you give us is a, is, a, is a gift and help us to use it wisely. I pray today for those who are ill, those who need your healing touch, like Barbara and Sandy and Dortha and Suzanne. I pray, Lord, that you will be with those today that just need comfort and peace, like Randy's family and friends and Vivian and my mom, as today is my dad's birthday. Um, I pray, Lord, that you'll just hold each one closely and and help them to be reminded that you are always with us. And I pray for each and every need that's here, Lord. So so many needs that have not been lifted up, but you know what they are, and you know how you know how we are. You know what we need, and and you are always at work in our lives. And we thank you. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save us, Lord, from the grip of death so that so often controls our lives. Help us each to say with the psalmist, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today and guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. 
May he bring you home rejoicing right back here Sunday morning. You guys have a couple of days off and um, I, I hope that you enjoy those days. Sleep in a little bit, get some rest um, and, and just enjoy. And I will look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. I love you guys so much. You're dear friends and, and I'll see you soon. Take care.